Hello and welcome to Continuing Clockwise, a channel about games, gamers, and gaming. I'm Chad. So this week we're going to talk about evil player characters, either individually or as entire groups for your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. This discussion will apply really equally well to any role-playing game, but um, as usual I'm focused on 5th edition d and I see this topic a lot in the various videos and podcasts that I follow, and more often than not, the discourse is really not very deep, and I'm often disappointed. It typically goes from either blanket advice to not allow evil player characters, or there are tales of evil adventuring parties who spend their entire sessions um, you know, fighting the town guards or tormenting children. Evil player characters can add a lot of depth to a campaign, but it does require some sophistication. So for this video, I'm going to do a little bit of discussion about some things that I think are missing and give some things for you to think about. And then I have three tips for players who want to play evil characters, and then three tips for dungeon masters who have evil player characters in their campaigns. For the sake of this discussion, I will be re referring to the, um, you know, the nine grid alignment system that first came out in Advanced Dungeons and & Dragons and is uh, currently used in 5th it's not a perfect model, but I think it's really useful and will be helpful here. So if you're not familiar with it, really the idea of that model for alignment is a, there are two different spectrums. One is good versus evil, and the other spectrum is law versus chaos. And there can be different combinations within those two spectrums. Now, right out of the gate, it gets into a little bit of trouble because all of those words are open to interpretation. And you could have long philosophical discussions about each. We're not gonna go into a lot of depth there, um, but, just to give you a baseline. When talking about good and trying to give some sort of definition, usually I compare good and evil with a character or a person, frankly's willingness um, to help people. So are their actions mostly to help others or are they mostly really self-centered or self-based? Hurting or killing someone for the sake of doing so or for your own benefit, even in the pursuit of some greater, greater ideology would be considered an evil act under this model. Helping people, especially when personal sacrifice is involved, would be considered a good act. Again, this is a little bit of a, of a simplification, but I think it's a good starting place uh, for today. Now, the law versus chaos spectrum is a little different. So lawful characters typically follow some sort of really strict code or guideline. We often see, um, you know, police officers, law enforcement, it's right in the title, and lawyers um, often are really oriented towards the laws that they're supporting. And they use the law to pursue their own interests or to engage with the world. Though the law that a character or a person, for that matter, follows isn't necessarily governmental law. So it could be a religious code. It could be their own personal code of honor if it's very strict. So that's an important thing to note, too. The law isn't always um, government law, but it is some sort of internal structure that drives their decisions. Another thing that is often lost in these discussions about evil characters is being good or evil is just one characteristic for a character. A character can be evil, but that doesn't mean they don't have friends or people they care about or strong relationships that mean a lot to them. Sure, some evil characters follow that Star Wars or you know, Sith model where it's just assumed that at some point the apprentice will betray the master. But that doesn't have to be the way that it is. A lot of evil characters really are attached to their families. Uh, you know, I remember the Kingpin in uh, Marvel Comics, and I, actually he was represented this way in the Netflix series as well. So the Kingpin it was, it was very attached uh, to his wife, Vanessa, even though he's clearly an evil character who's willing to hurt people for his own gain. Similarly, Walter White from the TV series uh, Breaking Bad, and frankly, you could do 10 hours of analysis just on Walter White's alignment. But in short, he starts his criminal career to provide for his family. Um, you know, he is sick. He has cancer. Um, his family's bills are mounting. Um, you know, he starts just by selling methamphetamine to strangers and telling some relatively white lies to his loved ones. And then step by step, we see him allowing people to die for his own convenience and then directly causing the murder of a rival um, who really meant him no harm. He's also a good example because we see that he does evil increasingly, not for its own sake. He's got really internal, specific, concrete reasons. But in an alignment sense, I don't think that lets him off the hook from being evil. He's an evil character. Another example that I think is one of the best, and I've mentioned it on this channel before in, the, in the, some of the earlier episodes, um, is the Sons of Anarchy, where we, see, we have a kind of collage of characters all with different alignments. And that shows by Kurt Sutter. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it focuses on a motorcycle gang 
And the protagonist is Jax Teller. And really, we see his efforts to try to lead the group, uh, lead the organization into a, kind of a straight-ish path of cleaner living. And so I'm going to show a clip from the series' second episode. And at this point, the club's main way of making money is by... Uh, smuggling guns. Uh, a recent shipment of their guns had been uh, burned down, and there were two bodies of women who were unidentified in, in in the fire. It turned out those women were associated with one of the club members, Tig Traeger, and the whole group is really concerned that if law enforcement discovers what has happened and they can connect it back to the motorcycle club, it will bring a lot of scrutiny, which will really hurt their business interests and put them at risk. One place in order. I didn't know what to say. How about the store burned down? They missed the fire sale. Well, I talked to Otto's sister, and Lodi forensic team will be here first thing in the morning. And the shit keeps piling on my head. Only one thing is going to stop that Lodi forensics team from getting to our warehouse, and that's another murder in Lodi. Yeah. I don't know. Hale's on red alert. Mayans, Nords, everyone's twitchy as hell, man. It's not a good time to kill It's never a good time. We're talking about protecting Tig here and staying out of ATF's crosshairs. We hit the projects, we find ourselves a scumbag, a dealer. We should off a couple of Nords. That is what we should do. All right, we should, we should just do that and we'll dump the bodies in Lodi. It buys us some time to get those Mexicans out of the hole. It sends a message to Darby, kill two birds with one crop. Very clever, but a cop's eyeball in the warehouse. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll handle that. You set it up. Hey. What if I could do this without spilling blood? Look, this ain't me tripping some guilt shit because of my kid. This is about one of us thinking straight. Brains before bullets, right? Let's hear it. All we need for murder are bodies and a crime scene. Jackie boy, I know you lost me. Skeeter, he's always got more gambling debt than he can handle. I'll make it worth his while. The cemetery guy? Cash for cadavers. Play cut. I give Lodi a front page murder. We don't stir up another shit storm to bite us in the ass. What about educating Darby? I'll figure that out. Important thing is to keep your DNA out of the Petri dish. Protect the club. Path of least resistance, always best, right? We'll do it your way, VP. All right. Don't make me regret this. If your initial plan to cover your ass is to go out and kill people who you don't even know yet, I think you might be evil. That sounds pretty evil to me. And we saw in this video how uh, Clay, who was, who was played by Ron Perlman, is an excellent character, excellent actor, and Tig neither have any problems with this plan right out of the gate. So I think that tells us that's a big red flag. Like, okay, you know, they're evil. Those are evil characters. And on the rest, if you watch, so uh, Bobby is the name of the character, the kind of Jerry Garcia looking character who was in the uh, kind of the mid ground. And the look on his face was really, he wasn't pleased with that plan. And then Jax, of course, does speak up. But Jax even seems willing to go along with this plan if the rest of the group agrees to it. And so thinking about good versus evil and that scale that we talked about earlier, I think Bobby and Jax both would probably be in that neutral category. At the very least, they're clearly willing to associate with murderers. Um, and they seem willing to even, you know, engage in that activity themselves. They would rather not, but they're willing to. Now, narratively, as a group of characters of kind of not good alignment, this works for a few reasons. One is the connections between them. It's worth noting that Clay is Jax's stepfather. And at this point, at least, they seem to have some genuine affection for one another. The rest of the group has a lot of esteem for Jax himself also. Uh, when he speaks, people listen. And there's an underlying loyalty to Jax because of his father, who was one of the founding members. Also important here 
is that the motorcycle club has some really strong group norms about their decision making processes. It's pretty fascinating, in fact. We, you know, we didn't see too, too much of it here, but they have a very strict parliamentary procedure. And their adherence to, their, to this procedure, to the order and the code of the club, is so strong, it could even be argued that some of the club members are lawful aligned, like I mentioned before. You know, they, they are so tied to the club and the club's order. Which brings up another underlying thing when thinking about you know, criminal characters or otherwise evil characters, which is the whole idea of honor among thieves. Just because you don't respect the governmental law doesn't mean you don't have a code. The idea of honor among thieves is you don't, you don't screw with each other's gigs. <laughs> you know, you don't steal from each other and you don't make it harder. You don't snitch to the law enforcement. You know, there's just some rules around that. And that gets really interesting, too, because even a chaotic evil or chaotic neutral character still can have a personal code, even if that personal code is very self-centered. One thing we see often is that a character who's not particularly noble still respects an individual or an organization purely because of the power that they wield. Looking back to a very iconic character, Han Solo from A New Hope. He talks a lot about why he wants to pay Jabba the Hutt back. It's not that Han's code says he always pays his debts. This isn't a Lannister thing from Game of Thrones. But he's just exhausted from being chased by bounty hunters. And so even though I think Han Solo's alignment in that first Star Wars movie is, I would say, chaotic neutral, he still isn't, he's not unpredictable. You, you, know, you know what he's going to do. It's very organized. He just doesn't care about law and order, and he doesn't care about saving people. Another thing to keep in mind about evil characters, a character's courage is not related to how good or evil they are. A good aligned character can still be a bit of a coward or just can be scared of something, and an evil character can be really brave. Yes, sometimes characters are driven towards evil because of their cowardice, as we see in, you know, another favorite of mine is Gaius Baltar from the reimagined Battlestar Galactica show from the early 2000s. But cowardice is not necessarily a feature of an evil character. So what does all this tell us about running evil characters in a Dungeons & Dragons environment? For one thing, Dungeons & Dragons does not necessarily lend itself to characters who are all that good. Campaigns differ, of course, but the general premise is these are characters who are going to go out of their way to kill things to take their stuff. That's the basic premise. And from that, there's not that much of a difference between a good aligned character and an evil character. So if you're thinking about playing an evil player character, the first two questions are the same as, as you should be asking for any character that you create. The first is, what is going to connect your character with the other characters in your adventuring party? Are they friends? Do they, are they professional colleagues? Are they family? Are they members of the same organization? The second is what is driving your character to adventure? Is it a love for money and wealth? Is it curiosity? Is it wanderlust? What is it exactly? Is it revenge? Is it just aggressive urges that need to be expressed somehow? Those are all good reasons. But there is a bonus question to ask if you're playing an evil character or in an evil group. What is going to prevent your character from betraying the other player characters in the party? Is it inherent loyalty to the group, like the characters in Sons of Anarchy? Is it fear of one of the other player characters? Or is it just the sense that there is concrete value in having these relationships and your character is inclined to preserve those? Those are, all, those are just some of the reasonable answers to that question that can help. I also have three tips for dungeon masters who anticipate evil characters in their party. And similarly, these categories are things you need to be thinking about anyway as a DM, though there's a few special twists with evil characters. The first is story hooks. So you can't necessarily count on your player characters wanting to do things just because it's the right thing to do. But otherwise, um, greed and self-preservation, which are typical hooks also for adventurers, should work with evil characters just as well. An evil character is just as likely to want to protect their home from uh, rampaging monsters as a good character. The second thing for a DM to keep in mind is tone. And so in general, you want to keep this in mind um, all the time anyway. So is your game going to be more like Game of Thrones, where, you know, frankly, torture and murder of beloved characters happens with disturbing regularity? Or is it going to be more like a Saturday morning cartoon like She-Ra or G.I. Joe, where the violence is really more abstract and, you know, what is good and what is evil and what is right and what needs to happen are very clear in any given moment. Adding evil to the mix can complicate things, but just because you have evil player characters doesn't necessarily mean you're signing up for an intense, mature content game. You can still keep it light and fun. 
And conversely, just because you don't have any evil characters, you know, surely doesn't mean you can't have kind of mature themes uh, featured in your game. The third thing to keep in mind as a DM with evil characters is keeping the spotlight balanced. Again, this is something you should be watching and paying attention to all the time anyway. What you don't want to have happen is, the, ha, is that the evil character is acting out in a way that really is controlling the game in a way that is not fun for you or, or as importantly, not fun for the other players in the game. You know, don't make assumptions here. Some players are happy to really not be in the direct spotlight, but you should offer that to them. Some players are happy to let another player kind of drive the energy of the group. That can be okay, but you need to pay attention because it also can lead to just, just kind of group problems that you should, uh, you'll should you want to avoid. So those are my tips and what I have to say about evil characters. I would love to hear from you. What evil characters in other media are you familiar with that can inform this discussion? Do you have any questions or thoughts about evil characters in your campaign that I didn't cover? Anything else you'd like to talk about? Go ahead and leave a comment and uh, we can talk about it. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And until next week, game great.